Welcome to our review on cell differentiation. First thing we need to understand is what on earth the word differentiation actually means. So in biology, that phrase means that we're converting an unspecialized cell to become specialized in order to carry out a particular function. And the whole reason behind this process of making specialized cells is to make them really well adapted to carry out a specific function within the body. So the first specialized cell we need to know about are sperm cells. Now, the whole purpose of the sperm cell is in order to transfer that genetic information from the father to obviously the new offspring. Now, we do have a few key adaptations here that we need to know in order to actually allow it to carry out that function. So the first one is it's got this thing called a flagellum, which is basically like a tail. And what that does is it spins and that actually allows the sperm cell to move, which is kind of important when it's got that little journey to make to find the egg. Second thing is it's got lots of mitochondria, which you can see in the mid piece in the diagram there. Because our sperm cell actually has to carry on quite a big journey, then it's going to need a lot of ATP. So all of those mitochondria there can carry out respiration, which, as we know, generates ATP. The third adaptation it has is right at the front of the head there. It's got this structure called an acrosome. Now, the acrosome basically is like a little pouch of digestive enzymes. And they're vital because when that sperm, if that sperm is lucky enough to reach the egg, then it's got to have a way to somehow get inside. And the way it does that is by releasing those digestive enzymes from the acrosome onto the membrane of the egg to actually allow it to gain entry. And therefore, the nucleus of the sperm can join with the nucleus of the egg. Our second specialized cell then are the fat cells. Now these are not the cute little things you saw on Doctor Who, the little adipose cells. These are sadly less cute. Now their whole purpose is to store fat. And the whole reason that we want to store fat, which I know probably goes against what some of you are thinking, is because we need fat in order to actually give us that energy store first of all. We also use fat as insulation so it helps to keep the body heat in. And finally, it forms this protective layer around our organs, which prevents a minor knock from causing serious organ damage. So fat cells are useful, contrary to what people may believe. They do have certain adaptations that allow them to carry out these roles. First of all, they've only got this very small cytoplasm layer around this fat reservoir. And that's what you can see in the diagram down there. That yellow bit is the giant fat reservoir. And their other key feature is that these are capable of expanding. Now, they don't just expand a little bit. They expand up to a thousand times their original size as they fill with fat. Hence why, if obviously we are eating a lot of junk food, we do tend to get a little bit bigger because all of those little fat cells can expand to a thousand times their original size. The third specialized cell we need to know about are red blood cells. And this is one that will come up again when you do B3. Now, the whole purpose or the function of our red blood cells is to transport oxygen around our body. And in order to do this, they've got a few key adaptations. First of all is their shape. They've got this biconcave disc shape. So basically they look kind of like palmer violets or refreshers. And the whole reason behind that is to increase the surface area to volume ratio because that means diffusion will happen at a faster rate. Second adaptation is that they've got this stuff called haemoglobin inside them, which is a carrier protein. And that is going to then allow the oxygen to bind to that haemoglobin. And that's where we make our oxyhemoglobin, which is what transports the oxygen through our bloodstream. The final adaptation we need to remember is that they have no nucleus. And the whole reason for that is to make as much space as possible to pack in the haemoglobin so it can transport as much oxygen as possible per blood cell. Our fourth specialized cell are the ciliated cells. Now, these are ones that you find within your airways, for example, and their whole purpose is to actually move the mucus, which contains any bacteria and dirt from where it's sitting in the airways. Now, what you can see on the right there is a lovely little microscope picture of these ciliated cells. And you can see they've got these little hair like structures on the top. So that's the cilia. Between those, we have another type of cell called goblet cells, and they produce mucus. 
Now, that mucus traps all the dirt and bacteria, and then those little cilia, they make a little wafting motion, which actually means that they sweep the mucus up from the lungs to the back of the throat where it can be swallowed. And when you swallow it, then it ends up in the stomach acid, which kills those bacteria. Our last specialised cell we need to know about is one that's in plants because we can't just focus on the animals as much as some of you would like to. And this type of cell is a palisade cell. Now, when you look at the diagram on the right, you may sit there and think, but that's just the plant cell. And the good news is, yes, it is. The diagram we tend to draw for plant cells is always the palisade cell. So what we actually find here, the one that we tend to draw, the palisade cell there, its whole purpose is to carry out photosynthesis. And you can actually just look at that diagram and see one of the adaptations it has. All those little green splodges are chloroplasts. And if you remember, the chloroplasts are the ones that trap that light energy for use in photosynthesis. We'll also find them all packed near the surface of the leaf. And they are that rectangular shape because that means that we can pack them really closely together maximizing the number of cells and therefore the number of chloroplasts able to trap the light. So make sure that at the end of this review you do know the definition of differentiation and you can recall not only the names of some of these specialized cells and their functions but also their adaptations. And one thing to remember is if it asks you just to list the adaptations you can literally write down no nucleus. If it asks you to explain the adaptations, then you've got to add the explanations I've given you. So no nucleus to make more space for hemoglobin, for example. So make sure that you are looking at the command words in the actual question to know what they're asking you to include. Otherwise, you could really easily throw away some marks on what should hopefully be quite a nice, easy question.